Praise God. Praise the Lord. Glad to have you guys with us this evening. Um, we are looking forward to what God is going to bring um, into your home and into your lives. Um, welcome to our spiritual growth and development. Um, I'm Pastor Stephanie, and this is Pastor Tucker, or Pastor Tuck, and we are pastors of My Church Lynchburg, and we are excited to be with you this evening. Amen. Praise God. Like I said, we want to thank all of you who are joining us tonight. I want you to go ahead and text your friends. Go ahead and tag them. Start your watch party. Let them know we're streaming live now on uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Fire Stick, Roku, Apple TV. And they can go ahead and get in and get this word tonight. We want to thank all of our partners who join us regularly. For all your seeds you're sowing to our ministry to help us continue to spread the gospel. But we're so excited about God, what he's doing in your life right now. And we're just going to get ready to get into this word. Amen. 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 Well, go ahead and take your Bibles in your hand and repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe every word. I believe every word. I am. I am. Who it says I am. Who it says I am. I can have. I can have. What it says I can have. What it says I can have. I can do. I can do. What it says I can do. What it says I can do. By hearing its word. By hearing its word. And applying it by faith. And applying it by faith. It'll change my life. It'll change my life. So I declare right now. So I declare right now. From this day forward. From this day forward. That my life. That my life. Will never. Will never, ever, 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 ever be the same again. Be the same again. And neither shall the life. And neither shall the life of anyone <clears throat> of anyone with whom with whom I share I share this word. This word. So I declare. So I declare. I'm going to share. <coughs> I'm going to share this word, this word with someone, with someone, so that their life, so that their life may be changed forever, may be changed forever in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor, Devin, go ahead and pray us in if you don't mind. <coughs> Dear Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this evening. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise. We, Lord God, just love you. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you for loving us. And Lord, as we are in the midst of social distancing, Father God, we pray right now that COVID-19 will be cursed at the root. And Lord God, that we'll be able to uh, fellowship again and be together, Lord God, be able to see our loved ones and Lord, that all will be um, peaceful, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray, even during this time of quiet, this time of social distancing, every household that joins us tonight and have joined us over the past weeks will know that there is no fear in you. And Lord, I pray that you just have your way this evening. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been talking about how to prosper in times of trouble. We said if we're going to be successful when trouble comes, we can't respond in fear. Amen? Amen. So we can't listen to what the enemy has to say or what the world has to say. But instead, we must seek the Lord and see what he has to say. Because we are in the midst of a season where we must not be able to hear from God. Where we must be able to hear from God. But do what he says. And that requires faith. So uh, we took a look closer at Romans 10, 17. Where Paul says in verse 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now we have established that faith is simply our trust in God. Amen. And we told you the word comes is not in the original Greek. So it really should read faith by hearing or faith exists by or faith reveals itself by hearing because our faith is made manifest or made evident by hearing. In other words, hearing is an opportunity for our trust in God to be demonstrated. Amen. That's gotta be demonstrated because at the moment he says something, 
it's going to become evident whether or not we really trust him or not. But God made it clear the problem is not with him not speaking, but instead us not hearing, which led us to consider what's stopping us from hearing God. So we looked at the two things that typically hinder our ability to hear from God. One, we have not spent enough time getting familiar with the Father's voice. And two, is our unbelief or lack of trust because we don't trust him enough to do what he said. But we came to a single conclusion that both hindrances can be handled with the word, plain and simple, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, our trust in him is what made manifest by what he says. And what he says is reveal, it reveals itself by his word. So if we're going to prosper in the time of crisis, amen, we need to be able to hear from God. And in order for that to happen, it's critical for us to get into that word. So what we want to talk about to you this evening is why the word is so important to our hearing. Well, the first reason is it keeps us from being led astray. Uh, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. See, because so many people don't realize the importance of God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, Satan has lulled us into a sense of complacency, into a place where we have relegated God's word to an afterthought, to the last resort, to the back of our lives, you know, to the place where it's just a Bible sitting on a coffee table, to riding in the back window of our car, you know, to something that's just sitting on the bookshelf. And we don't realize how important God's word is because even now that we understand now that it's important for us to be able to hear from God, you've got to understand how important it is to that God's word is to that process. Mm -hmm. So we're in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and when you get there, look at verse 2. Here Paul tells Timothy to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and teaching. Notice what he says. He tells them to preach the word. Mm -hmm. He tells them to use it to convince, to rebuke, to exhort, and to teach, and to do it with patience. Well, why does he do tell him that? Verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He says, because there will come a time when people will not want to hear the things that are beneficial to them or are what is best for them. You know, in the, I guess it's probably going on now. This year is 19 years since God called me to preach. Mm -hmm. And in the 19 years God's called me to preach, 17 years of pastoral ministry, I have seen a lot of people come and go in churches. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people come in and so, oh man, Pastor, that was a good word. I, I, well, I got a lot out of that. But they have refused to stay because they didn't want to hear what the word actually said. Sure. Not that it wasn't beneficial to them. Not that it wasn't what they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what they wanted to hear. That's right. And that's exactly what he says. He says, a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm-hmm. He says, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. See, instead they will surround themselves with those who will say the things they want to hear. Mm -hmm. See, they would rather hang out with their girlfriends or their or, or their homies that they're going to tell them, yeah, you're right. Mm. That it's okay to keep doing what you're doing. You know that everything you're doing is okay and that, yeah, it's the world's fault. It's everybody else's fault mm -hmm. that's what's happening in your life but you. And no, you don't have to change anything, but you're still getting the same results. 
But the word is actually there to show you how to benefit. Remember what I told you, God said, the Lord is the one that teaches you to profit. That leads you in the way you should go. So God's word is there for a purpose. He said, use it for teaching. He said there is for to convince, rebuke, exhort, and teaching. He said, and to do so with all patience. He says, so he tells us to preach the word. My job is not to tell you what you want to hear. My job is to teach you what you need to know. That's good. He says, they will turn their ears away from the truth mm -hmm. and be turned aside to fables, to stories, to fictitious stories, to fairy tales. Here he says, they will reject the truth and be led astray to follow lies. But in verse 5, he warns and issues Timothy a warning that extends to all of us as believers and ministers of the gospel. He says, for you be watchful mm -hmm. in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of evangelists, fulfill your ministry. He said, in other words, you be careful. He said, endure afflictions. He said, I don't care what happens. I don't care how they treat you. I don't care what goes on. He said, you remain faithful to your assignment of sharing the word because the word is what keeps people from being led astray. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> Just go back a, a chapter and look at verse 16. Here he says, all scripture is God-breathed. See, contrary to popular opinion, the Bible is not written, was not written by man. Mm -hmm. Man was just a vessel. The Bible was written by God. Yep. As a matter of fact, John 1 and 1 says, he makes it clear that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, and that word, he says, is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God or the woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, the word was meant for training you in righteousness mm -hmm. to show you how you're supposed to live. See, this is what we have to understand. The whole purpose of the Bible is to teach you how to live. Can I prove it to you? Go over to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. And when you get there, look at verse 4. Pastor Stephanie, read that for me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Oh, I need y'all to catch that. Mm -hmm. It says everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance or the lasting of the scriptures, the fact that the scriptures are still here intact. <clears throat> he says, and the encouragement of them, we might have hope. Here he tells us that every word that was written was written to teach us so that we would have hope. See, the Bible says that when we got saved, he became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Yes, of God. But prior to salvation, all we ever knew was a life of sin. Now watch this. When you started to commit sin, you didn't even know how to sin right. Somebody had to teach you how to sin. When you started cursing, you didn't even know how to use the words correctly. You had to pay attention. Somebody had to train you how to sin. When, when, when you started drinking, you didn't even know how to drink right. Somebody had to train you how to do these things. You, you were shaped in iniquity, the Bible says. You were born in sin, but you were shaped in iniquity. You had to learn the lifestyle of sin. Mm -hmm. But he said when he, when you got saved, he became sin and you became the righteousness of God. So now that you have become the righteousness of God, you have to learn to live righteous. Yeah. 
And that's what the Bible says. It's useful for training in righteousness. We must be trained in righteousness. See, because if we have any hope in living righteous, we must be trained in righteousness. And that requires the word. Because it's the only thing that will keep us from being led astray. It's the only thing that will make you think that you're doing what God requires by your own thoughts, by your own emotions. See, because your flesh will tell you to justify your behavior. It'll tell you to justify your feelings. It'll tell you that what you're doing is okay. That God's pleased with that. That's how we're supposed to. But the word will train you as to what God expects. And that's why he says it's useful for training in righteousness. Because it's the only thing that's going to keep you on that path. Jesus puts it this way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Remember, Jesus, the Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm. So he says, the word is the way, the truth, and the life. So it's the way. It's the way to get to Christ. The way to get to God. It's the only truth there is, and it's the life you're supposed to live, is all found in the word. Mm -hmm. But pastor, what if you don't believe what the word says? I'm glad you asked. Go over to Romans chapter 3. And when you get there, look at verse 3. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 3. Pastor Stephanie, go ahead and read that for me. For what if some did not believe? Would their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. See, <clears throat> regardless of whether you believe it or not, doesn't change whether or not it's the truth. It just hinders your ability to hear and will allow you to be led astray. As a matter of fact, go ahead and turn over to Galatians 1. See, so many times we don't recognize that it's our unbelief, our unwillingness to accept God's word as truth mm -hmm. that puts us in the position of being deceived. Sure. I can prove it to you. Y'all remember with Eve, with Eve? Mm -hmm. when Satan came to her, he said, did God truly say that you would surely die? Mm. He, 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 the first thing he did was convince her that what God said wasn't true, which opened the door for deception. See, that's why he's always trying to get you to refute the word that you hear. Pastor tells you what the word says. He told you, open your Bible to it. He reads it to you right there. You're reading it along with him and tells you what the word says. And you're like, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's the first thing he whispered in your ear. Yep. You don't have to do that. But the word just told you to. Yep. Pastor didn't tell you to. He just read you what the word said. That's right. He just trained you in righteousness by giving you what the word said. He used it with teaching to teach you what the word said. Mm -hmm. He just gave you the way, the truth, and the life. But the enemy just told you, is that really what you have? Does it really take all of that? And at the moment you accept that, now you have been open to deception. And now the enemy is now has a way to get you off track, to be able to lead you astray. Y'all in Galatians chapter 1, look at verse 6. Here Paul says, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, mm -hmm. which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. In other words, it's amazing how easily you were led astray by people who wanted to take advantage of you and twist the word. 
It's amazing to me to see believers sitting there trying to refute the word that's in the Bible. Well, I mean, you, you don't have to tithe. But the, God said bring the tithe. Yeah. I didn't say it. I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. But, well, you know, you, you, you don't really have to do that. That's, that's Old Testament. That's of the law. Well, guess what? The Bible says Abraham tithed. Yep. And he was before the law. So evidently tithing existed before the law did. Mm -hmm. So you can't justify not tithing because you think it's of the law. Tithing came before the law. So evidently it was the will of God and is the will of God because the Bible says so. But you've got believers that are turning away so soon from him who called them to a different gospel. He says, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you. They're looking to take advantage of you and they want to pervert the gospel of Christ. See, you've got to get a hold of that. Look at verse 8. He says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you other than what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. He said, because no matter who it is, even if it's us, if anyone preaches anything that's contrary to the word, it's not of God. That's right. He says, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. I told you, in the last days, people will go after whatever tingles their itching ear. They'll look for teachers who will tell them whatever they want to hear. But we must settle everything with the word. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. That's why we turn to so many scriptures. See, some people are like, well, well, I don't have people come to church and be like, well, you know, they, they just they just turn too many scriptures. All the time. Yeah. Well, what do we come to church for? <laughs> you go to church to learn the word. That's right. So what, would you rather me give you one scripture and then talk to you for 45 minutes mm. about what I think? Nope. Did you come to church to hear from Pastor Tucker or did you come to hear from the Lord? Because Pastor Tucker didn't write the Bible. Nope. My job is to preach the word. That's right. To teach the word. That's right. Watch this. You would not go to a math class where the teacher only pulled out one problem out of the math book. You done paid all that money for them big old thick math books. The math books are always the most expensive ones you get. And then he pull out one problem and the rest of the year they teach you something and it don't even look nothing like math. You're like, wait a minute. What is this? Mm -hmm. This don't look like what's in the book. That's true. I, I signed up for math class yeah. because I wanted to learn math. Well, we come to church because we came to learn the word. That's right. And that's why he says by the mouth of two or three witnesses mm -hmm. that every word shall be established. See, I can't just take one scripture and take it out of context and then tell you what I think about it. Anything that God has established, he ain't going to say it once. God has repeats himself over and over because he knows how dumb we are. Yeah, let me make it plain. God knows how <laughs> dense we are. The Bible calls it hard-hearted. Hard -hearted. Yeah. He says, because you're hard to penetrate. He said, because it won't get in there the first time. He says, so he keeps repeating himself. So anything God tells you, anything anybody tells you, you ought to be able to find it at least two or three more times in the scriptures. Yep. He says, because I'm telling you over and over again because I'm trying to get it established in you. And that's why we turn to so many scriptures. So that you can see this is the will of God. Because I don't want you to take my word for it. Because only what he says matters. Mm -hmm. See, if it doesn't line up with the word, it's not the will of God. That's right. Go over to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And when you get there, look at verse 1. Says I'm sorry, verse 2. 2, yeah. <laughs> and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. See, the only way to determine a lie from the truth is to compare it to the truth. Amen. That's simple. Yeah. A lie is a lie, and the truth is the truth. He said you'll be able to prove what is the will of God. Mm -hmm. See, that's the only way, is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. you got to get some new information. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to open up this book. you got to get some word on the subject to find out, is that really what God wants for my life? Mm -hmm. Is that really what God thinks? Is that really what God says? Let me get some word on it. Amen. See, you've got to settle everything by the word. That's right. See, another reason why the word is critical to our hearing is it helps us distinguish the voices. Go over to 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. See, because I told you, you'll start thinking, well, I think God wants me to do that. Well, I feel like God wants me to do that. Yeah, you might think that, you might feel that. But what does the word say? Mm -hmm. The word should confirm all of the thoughts and feelings you're having if it's God. 1 John 4, look at verse 1. Go ahead and read that, Pastor. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Okay. First of all, you see what he said? He said, don't believe every spirit. Every. See, somebody mm -hmm. said, well, you know, the Lord laid on my spirit to tell you this. Mm -hmm. He said, don't believe every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. He said, test the spirits to see whether or not they're from God. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I test it? If what you tell me God told you, it ought to line up with the word. Because mm -hmm. God's not going to contradict himself. Right. He says this. Go ahead, verse 2. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Okay. Now check this out. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus has come in the flesh mm -hmm. is from God. Now, what do you mean by that, Pastor? What did I tell you John 1 and 1 says? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So every spirit that acknowledges the Word is from God. Mm -hmm. So either it has to line up with the Word or it's not from God. Oh, y'all didn't see that coming. Yeah, he said every spirit that acknowledges Jesus has come in the flesh. Well, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. So it has to acknowledge that the Word yeah. is from God. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't acknowledge that the Word is from God, then it's not from God. I'm just so spiritual. I'm more spiritual than I am, you know, uh, religious. I'm more spiritual than, you know, believing in, in God. I'm more spiritual. You know, you got to watch those spiritual speaking folk because a lot of things that they say, it does not line up with the word of God. You know, the Holy Spirit can reveal things to you when you are a believer. But confirmation and clarity comes from looking in the word of God to back up what the Holy Spirit is telling you to tell somebody else. Just don't say something without some scriptural base to help to support what you're trying to say. See, anything that contradicts the word, you got to recognize is not of God. See, people always say the spirit told them to do this. The spirit told them to, to say that. The spirit told me this, that, there, and other. Well, it may be the spirit of offense. Oh, my goodness. It may be the spirit of jealousy. Yeah. It may be the spirit of lust. Yep. It may be the spirit of greed. Sure. See, because if their heart is not right, they, they could be hearing from other spirits. That's right. It might just be your flesh. Mm -hmm. But if it's God, it has to line up with the word. And that's why it's so critical to get in his word so you can distinguish which voice is which. Y'all remember Jesus, right? <laughs> when he was led up into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It says the spirit 
He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Like he said, the Spirit led him to spend time with God. We already know that that's a desire of God. Yeah. The Bible tells us to draw closer to him. So that's acknowledging him in the word. Mm -hmm. We know the Bible talks about when you fast. So we know that if the, Bible, if, if the spirit is leading me to go to a solitary place to fast, then I know that's God. See, the tempter comes because he wants to try to lead me astray. And it says when he came, the first thing he did was start trying to get me to not believe the word. Mm -hmm. Because I told you, at the moment you stop believing the word, now the door is open for deception. But the way Jesus counteracted that was, he said, the word says, it is written. Right. He said, because I'm testing the spirit by the spirit. And only that spirit that says that this word has come from God, I know is of God. Mm -hmm. See, he was able to defend himself, to keep himself out of that place of being led astray by being in the word. See, the word will prepare you to receive revelation. Go over to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I, I pray this is helping you all. But you got to understand how important the word is if you're going to be able to hear from heaven. If you're going to be able to hear from God. Mm -hmm. Because we already know that two of the biggest hindrances from us not being able to hear God is not being familiar with his voice and not being able to trust him. And so if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, then we know it requires word to develop my trust in him. And it requires word for me to know his voice. That's right. Because the word is going to keep me on that path. It's how I'm going to confirm which voice I'm hearing. It's going to keep me in that place where I know I can trust him. But it all establishes itself at the word. Y'all in Proverbs 6? Look at verse 20. It says, My son, keep your father's command, and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. See, look at, look at what he's saying there. He says the word is what's going to lead you. Mm -hmm. He says, and he says when you roam, he says so when, when you're aimless, he says it's God's going to give you direction. He says, when you sleep, it's what's going to give you peace. And when you get up, he said, it's going to give you revelation. Mm -hmm. See, it's preparing you to be able to receive. Because by spending time in it, you get to know the voice when you hear it. And it does so by preparing your spirit. Mm -hmm. See, John tells us in his gospel, he says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That word sanctify means set aside for God's usage. So he's simply telling you that God's word is what sets you aside yeah. so that you can be used by him, so that he can speak to you, mm -hmm. so you can know what he wants you to do. And that's why it's so important for you to understand that, that he's saying simply set me aside so that God can speak to me, so God can use me. It's preparing your spirit so that you can commune with God. See, the more you read God's word, the more you're tuned in so that when he speaks to you, you can hear him. Matter of fact, go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And look at verse 3. It says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. See, here he tells us that that word sanctifies us. He said, because of the word that we, he spoken to us, 
it, 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 clean, it cleanses us. Yeah. See, you got to realize you're a vessel and you only have room enough for so many things. The more word comes in, the less of the world is able to, you're able to hold on to. Mm -hmm. See, two things can't occupy the same space. Right. That's why when you're stressed, when you're worried, when you're going through things, that's why it's important to be able to recite the word, to confess the word, because that's how you clear those negative thoughts. That's how you get those things out of your head. Because, see, the word has the ability to clean you. It has the ability to get rid of the cares of the world, to get rid of the attitudes, the things we pick up, so that we can receive revelation. But we've got to recognize how important the word is to our hearing and desire the word. That's the problem. Most people don't desire word. Mm -hmm. Most believers, and I'm not going to say most, but a lot of believers even, dread going to church. They dread going to hear word. They dread reading their Bible and not realizing that it is the most powerful thing in your life. It's the thing that should energize you. It's the thing that should be fueling you. God himself said, man does not live by bread alone, by every word that received from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. You should be as excited about getting word as you should be about getting something to eat. Sure not. Oh, come on now. Y'all know how you do. Somebody said, we get ready to go out to eat. You start thinking about what you're going to order, but where we're going. And you start thinking about what you're going to order before you get there. Yep. They tell you, get there, they hand you a menu. I don't, I don't need the menu. I know what I'm getting. Because you've already planned on it. You have an anticipation. You have an expectation right. of what you're about to receive. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't live by bread alone, but by every word yes. that proceeds from the mouth of God, you ought to have that mm -hmm. same expectation when you tune into the broadcast, when you go to church, when you pick up your Bible, yep. when you listen to the podcast, you ought to have that same kind of expectation. I already know what I'm about to receive. I got an expectation. And when believers dread to come to church or dread to hear the word, you have to check what is your motive? You know, what is your motive for going to church? Is it just to do works or is it to worship? Is it just to do works or delve and dig yourself down into that word for revelation? Yeah, because so many of us have gotten caught up into this pattern of religion mm -hmm. versus relationship. Yep, big difference. We don't see that that's what it has become. It has become a religious ritual for us. Yep. And we don't realize that it's an opportunity to spend time with our father, the one that knows everything, and he wants to speak into your life and direct you. And so many of the issues that we have, we wouldn't have if we listened to him. Sure. Or you go because you're worried about the approval from other people, from man, you know, instead of worrying or, or you know, worshiping, knowing that you're already approved and loved by God because you are the righteousness of God. So it doesn't matter what man thinks. But when you sit there and you think about other people judging you, then that's going to cause that disconnect from God through worship because you are allowing the enemy to use that approval, that's, that need to be approved or praised. You know, again, check your motive. And that's why it's so important to develop that relationship. You know, we spend time with our kids. We spend time with our kids mm -hmm. because we enjoy spending time with them. They enjoy spending time with us. It's, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're able to glean. They're able to receive the things that we're pouring out that make their lives better. They're able to receive instruction. But like I say, if it was one of those things, oh, we got why we gotta sit in here? Why we gotta talk to y'all? Why then, then you'll never be able to get anything that I have for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you gotta see. You gotta check your relationship with God. That's good. Amen. That's why the word is so important. Mm -hmm. You gotta realize that it's better than anything else that you're ever gonna receive. That's right. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two. Beginning at verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. 
if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Okay. Here he says, lay aside all malice. That's evil intent. Evil intent. Yep. All deceit. You know, all uh, deception, all trickery, all uh, dishonesty. He says, hypocrisy, <coughs> all falsehood, all fake. He says, all envy, all that worrying about what somebody else has and not what you have of your own. He said, all evil speaking, all of that saying things that are not of good and uh, benefit to someone else. He says, as newborn babes desire pure milk of the word. He said, just like if you've ever seen a newborn baby, how they are when they're hungry. They cry for it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they scream for it. You pull the bottle out of their mouth and they still sucking. They, they sucking air. They, they, they're <laughs> reaching for it. They want yeah. that bottle. Why? Because they desire that pure milk. Mm -hmm. Because they know that their body needs it to grow. You ought to have that same desire for word. Mm -hmm. That's why I say you ought to get excited. If you've ever seen, I remember when our kids were babies, like I said, and they were hungry and they start crying. As soon as they could see the bottle, <laughs> they started acting, you know, like, I mean, they, they would start acting erratic because they knew it's coming. I can see it. It's on the way. Or even hear us fixing the bottle. Exactly. Yeah. They hear you in there putting the stuff together, you know, warming the bottle up. They they, they, they get louder because they're like, hey, bring it, bring it. I got to have it. You ought to get that excited about the word. Yeah. That's what he says. Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow. Mm -hmm. If indeed you've tasted that the Lord is good. If you know that God is good, then why would you not want his word because his word is him? See, that's why I get so, that's why I'm so obsessed with the word of God because I know how good he is. Mm -hmm. And you grow every time. Every, every time. Every time. Every time. That's why I enjoy preaching. That's why I enjoy teaching because mm -hmm. everything I feed you, I got to eat it first. And it blesses me. It continues to make me better. Yep. I'm telling you, this, this, this word is so important so that you can hear God. Mm -hmm. So you can hear him when he speaks to you. Go over to Psalm 119. <clears throat> Our last scripture. But I, I, I got to make sure you get this. Psalm 119. When you get there, look at verse 105. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I, I, I told you, a lamp helps you to see where you're going. But when you get to a fork in the road, you don't just need to see the fork. You need direction. Yep. So the word not only helps you see where you're going, but it also gives you direction. You need a revelation. You need to be able to hear from God. But I told you, just like the GPS in your car, before you can tell how to get where you want to go, it always begins by saying proceed to the highlighted route. It's always going to give you some instruction. You've got to start at the map. See, so before, if you want to hear from God, you've got to start in the word. See, if you want to know how to fix your marriage, you've got to start in the word. That's right. If you want to know how to fix your finances, you got to start in the word. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how to fix your health, you got to start in the word. Because it's literally a lamp into your feet. It'll show you where to go mm -hmm. and it will give you directions once you get there. But you got to spend time in the word because when God speaks. And see, the problem is when we see stuff in the word we don't like, well, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I'll do this, but I'll do that. No, you no. can't do that. That's just like driving on a GPS and then you get to a plant and they tell you to turn right here. I don't like the way it look over there. And you keep on driving. No, that's how you get lost. Yeah. That's how you get led astray. Mm -hmm. Totally. Because you're going by how you feel. Mm -hmm. Instead of what the word said. The word is so important to this process. Everything that's happening, you got to be able to go to the word. Mm -hmm. Every time God speaks, you got to go to the word, confirm it in the word. And see, watch this. When you get to the point where you've got enough word, when God speaks, you don't have to be trying to flip through the Bible and see if it's in there. Mm -hmm. That's how you know. Yep. 
That's how I know it's God. When people, when I say say things to people like God said this to me, they be like, "Well, how did you know it was God?" Because I got so much word in here. I know what he sound like. And what he said to be confirmed with the word that I have. It lined up with the word. So that's how you got to get in this word. You know, the other night we were talking about maps. And, you know, when Pastor Tuck and I first started dating, needless to say, you know, there wasn't a GPS out there. We basically, or you may remember those big, huge atlas books, the little map books. You know, you had to follow what you read on the map. And the interesting thing is, when we would go on long road trips, we would look at the map up toward the trip and really focus on it the night before so we know which exit, which highway, whatever we had to go on, we already had it pre-planned. And we spent time to find our way there. You know, we just didn't fold the map up or, you know, use it to hold something together or sat in the, on the coffee table. No, we used that map as a tool. And you had to spend time to read the map instead of just putting your finger right there and saying, okay, yeah, that's, that's the spot. That's wrong. Yeah, we, we couldn't just get in the car and say, we're going here. And then start going and be like, well, I don't know exactly where it is, but I got a map at home. <laughs> that didn't do us no good. <laughs> like I said, we, we, we literally, I literally had to get in there and Ooh. plot out through the book yeah. how to get from where I was mm -hmm. to where I wanted to go. Yeah. And the book would give me all of the instructions that I needed. Sure enough. The Bible is the same way. Mm -hmm. If I sit down and say, how do I get from where I am to where I want to go? The book will give me all the instructions that I need. And if I follow those instructions, it'll show me exactly how to get there. That's right. So now when somebody else tells me, well, you need to make a turn on this. Well, no, that doesn't sound anything like the instructions mm. that I had. Mm. So if if we did feel like we got off course and we had stopped for gas and asked somebody, well, how far are we from here? They said, oh, well, you got a long way to go, this, that, that, and the other. And you got to turn and go over this way. And oh, you, you going the wrong way. All I had to do is pull out the book and say, wait a minute. That doesn't line up with what the book said. They don't know what they're talking about. And so you've got to be able to do exactly that same thing. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to get in that word. Because the word is the, going to be the thing that's going to keep you from being led astray. Yep. It's going to be the thing that keeps you on course. Yes. It's going to prepare your spirit to hear from God. Mm -hmm. So you've got to stay in the word. That's right. And it's so important to your hearing. But if you're not comfortable with hearing from God, if you're you if you don't, you're not familiar with God's voice, with God's word, this is a relationship thing. This is how the Father deals with his children. And if you're not one of his children, but you desire to know him, this is your opportunity. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You could be saved. You don't have to change anything you're doing. You don't have to try to do anything to make him know that you're worthy of it. Because that's not how it works. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him would not perish. But have everlasting life. He gave up his son just so that if you believed. He said you could have it. So the first thing you have to do is believe he loved you enough to give up his son. Mm -hmm. But then you must be willing to give up your life in exchange for the life that he has for you. You've got to stop wanting to do things your way and be willing to do things his. That's right. You have to confess him as Lord. Give him permission to make all the decisions of your life. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want to do tonight, we can do that right now. Pray this prayer with me. Precious God, Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I give you permission to make all of my decisions. I believe you love me enough to give up your life for me. You hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. And now you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. You've been praying for this very moment in my life. Father, be my Father. Make me your child. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and teach me how to live for you. If you've prayed that prayer, you're not a part of the body of Christ, the family of believers, and there's nothing anybody else can do to stop you. That's right. 
That's right. The next step on this journey is to find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church where you can grow. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the Lynchburg area, we'd love to have you as part of my church, Lynchburg, 1717 Park Avenue. Like I said, during this period of social distancing and stay at home, like I said, we're not meeting there personally. But we do our broadcast every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m., mm -hmm. every Sunday morning at 12.15 p.m., 12.15 p.m., <laughs> which is noon, I'm sorry. And if you're not in this area, click the link attached to our video, go to our website, lovemychurch.org, send us a message, let us know you received Christ today. And we'll be glad to help you connect with the church in your area. If you just want to help us continue to spread the gospel, Click the donate button. Sow a financial seed. Help us continue to share the gospel all over the world. You can use Cash App at dollar sign My Church Lynchburg. You can use Givelify. Or you can use PayPal.me forward slash My Church Lynchburg. But in any of those methods, know that your seeds will go to help spreading the gospel all over the world. And we thank you for your support. But in any event, share this message with someone who you know needs it. We love you and watch with us again on next time. God bless you. God Amen. Bless. Amen. Amen.